जय हिंद स्टूडेंट्स इन द प्रीवियस लेक्चर वी हैव स्टार्टेड विद द न्यू यूनिट ऑफ करंट इलेक्ट्रिसिटी राइट इन दैट लेक्चर वी हैव डिस्कस द इंट्रो रिगार्डिंग करंट रिगार्डिंग टाइप्स ऑफ चार्ज कैरियर्स एंड सॉलिड्स लिक्विड्स एंड गैसेस देन वी हैव डिस्कस द इलेक्ट्रिक सर्किट एंड देन वी हैव डिस्कस द एसआई यूनिट ऑफ करंट एज वेल टुडे वी विल बी एक्सटेंडिंग दैट टॉपिक एंड वी विल बी डिस्कसिंग दीस टर्म्स एंड टर्मिनोलॉजीज राइट वी विल स्टार्ट विद ड्रिफ्ट वेलोसिटी then we'll try to find out the relationship between drift velocity and electric field then we'll try to get the relationship between drift velocity and the electric current and last we'll discuss about electron mobility and current density right so let's begin with drift velocity first topic is drift velocity so students yesterday we have discussed if we consider a conductor in the absence of any source then what happens is the free electrons inside the conductor they have continuous random motion they move randomly about here and there due to the thermal energy right that can be represented by this particular diagram this we have discussed yesterday as well this is the diagram basically this is a conductor and no electric pressure that is no potential difference is applied across its ends no source is connected so what happens is these are the ions these are the ions they are immobile these are the positive ions they are immobile they keep on oscillating about the mean positions and these are the free electrons these are the free electrons these are the electrons which are present in the outermost shell of an atom they are known as valence electrons these free electrons act as charge carriers although inside a conductor the atoms are closely packed yet the electrons are free to move randomly about here and there i am talking about free electrons which act as charge carriers so in the absence of an external field these electrons they tend to move randomly they have continuous random motion they have continuous random motion so these are ions they are immobile they keep on oscillating about their mean position and this represent free electrons they represent free electrons and these act as charge carriers they act as charge carriers right so students do remember this very fact that positive ions they are immobile they don't act as charge carriers inside a conductor right it is only the free electrons that act as charge carriers and these positive ions tend to keep oscillate about the mean position right so they are immobile so these free electrons they have continuous random motion why they have continuous random motion it is because of thermal energy and the velocity which they acquire in the absence of an external source that is known as thermal velocity that is known as thermal velocity so students you can see they are randomly moving about it here and there they do not have any preferred direction of motion so the average thermal velocity of the electrons in the absence of electric field or in the absence of any external source is always zero so if it poses initial velocity or thermal initial velocity of u1 u2 u3 and finally suppose n electron poses thermal velocity of even then the average velocity it is known as the average thermal velocity average means arithmetic mean that is u1 vector plus u2 vector plus u1 vector divided by n it will be always zero put this as equation one so what i stated is in the absence of any source the free electrons inside a conductor poses continuous random motion these free electrons move randomly about here and there they do not have any preferred direction of motion it is because of their thermal energy that the velocity is known as the thermal velocity thermal velocity of electrons is of very high order it is about 10 raised to power 5 meter per second i repeat the order of thermal velocity of electrons is 10 raised to power 5 meter per second which is very large right so average thermal velocity of electrons in the absence of an external source is always zero right this is a important point 
Now what happens is we connect the source across its ends. Means what we do is we connect a battery or a cell like this, right? Yesterday I told you this is the positive terminal of the battery and this is the negative terminal of the battery. It provides higher potential, so this end of the conductor will be at higher potential, while this end of the conductor will be at lower potential. As students, you all are aware, the direction of the electric field is always along the direction in which the value of potential falls or decreases. So the direction of the electric field is always from higher potential to lower potential. This is suppose the electric field. Right? And let us consider L to be the length of the conductor and the cross section area of the conductor B A. Now what happens is, under the influence of this external field, the electrons being negatively charged will experience an electric force and being negatively charged, it will experience an electric force in a direction opposite to that of the electric field. So, these three electrons will now tend to drift in a particular direction. And what is that particular direction? From lower potential to higher potential. It will experience electric force in a direction opposite to that of the electric field. Electric field is from higher potential to lower potential, but the electrons will drift inside a conductor from lower potential to higher potential because electrons are negatively charged. They are negative charge carriers. So yesterday also we have discussed the direction of the electronic current is from lower potential to higher potential. But the direction of the conventional current is considered to be along the direction of the flow of positive charge, right? That will be from higher potential to lower potential. And in an electric circuit, you need to indicate the direction of conventional current and not that of electronic current, right? And the direction of conventional current is opposite to which the electrons drift. So, under the influence of this electric field, the electrons will experience electric force as a result of which all the electrons inside the conductor will tend to get accelerated in a direction opposite to that of the electric field. Right? So suppose the constant potential difference which is maintained across the ends of the conductor be V. In that case, now the electrons under the influence of this external field will acquire velocity. This velocity this average velocity acquired by the electrons under the influence of electric field in addition to their random motion that is students known as drift velocity and drift velocity its magnitude is far less as compared to that of the thermal velocity right I again repeat what is drift velocity it is the average velocity of free electrons inside a conductor under the influence of electric field in addition to their random motion. So that is the drift velocity of the electrons. Right? Now let's find out the relationship between drift velocity and the electric field. Right? Let's try to find out the expression between these two, relating these two. We represent drift velocity by Vd. So now what happens is as I stated electric force is given by in vector form, as you are aware it is QE, it is QE vector. Now we are talking about electron which is negatively charged. So over here electric force would be equal to minus EE. Isn't it? Electron being negatively charged. Also, if A is the acceleration which each electron gets accelerated. So as per Newton's second law, force is also given by mass into acceleration. So equating these two, what do you get? n a vector is equal to minus e e vector which implies that the acceleration would be given by minus e e vector divided by m so what does this negative sign indicate students this negative sign is indicating of the fact that the electrons inside the conductor get accelerated in a direction opposite to that of the electric Look, electric field is from higher potential to low, lower potential, but electrons getting accelerated from lower potential to higher potential. So negative sign is suggestive of this particular fact. Right? You can express the term E electric field in terms of potential difference as well. Right? So anyway, 
electric field as you are aware in magnitude is given by potential difference across the ends of the conductor divided by length of the conductor this is also the expression which we are aware of right now let's find out the expression for the drift velocity as i have maintained students these electrons under the influence of electric field will get accelerated it will get accelerated right now when the electron gets accelerated its velocity will increase but that increase in the velocity of the electron will last for a very very short time before it again collides with the vibrating wire so that small span of time during which the electron accelerates it speeds up before again suffering collision against the vibrating wire that short span of time is known as relaxation time it is known as relaxation time right so the final velocities acquired by n electrons inside the conductor can be represented like this using first equation of motion in vector form it will be u1 vector plus a vector tau 1 this is the relaxation time i am talking about this is a very very short interval of time during which the electron accelerates and its speed increases from initial velocity u1 to final velocity v1 before it again suffers collision by the vibrating positive ions right so similarly for other electrons it may be written as like this a vector tau 2 tau 1 tau 2 these all are the relaxation time so for the nth electron what do we get is vn vector it would be equal to un vector plus a vector tau n right so these are the velocities acquired by the electron under the influence of external electric field so let's find its average velocity as per definition students drift velocity is the average velocity of the electrons under the influence of the electric field right so these are the final velocities of the electrons under the influence of the electric field so average would be arithmetic mean of v1 v2 v3 and so on therefore drift velocity let us represent it like this v d it stands for drift small letter v it stands for velocity so drift velocity as per definition is the average velocity of the electrons under the influence of the electric field so average of v1 v2 and so on average means arithmetic mean so it would be given by arithmetic mean arithmetic mean is sum of all the observations divided by total number of observations so what to do is now let's substitute the values and let's get the result right okay now let's substitute the values of v1 v2 v3 and so on right and let's try to get the result what we get is vd vector it would be equal to substitute these values so what do we get u1 vector plus a vector tau 1 plus u2 vector plus a vector tau 2 and so on lastly we will get un vector plus a vector tau n divided by n so you can rearrange the terms and we can write it like this drift velocity v d in vector form it would be equal to students just rearrange the terms it can be written as u1 vector plus u2 vector plus u1 vector divided by n plus in all the other terms a vector is common all the electrons will get accelerated by the same amount same magnitude right and over here it is tau 1 plus tau 2 plus tau 3 plus tau n divided by n this is the average of all the relaxation time which naturally would be known as average relaxation time right so it can be further written as now look, this we have already discussed from equation 1 the average thermal velocity of electrons is always zero it is always zero as per equation 1 plus a vector 
This is the average of all the relaxation time. It may be termed as average relaxation time. Tau is average relaxation time. Relaxation time may also be defined as the time that has elapsed between two successive collisions. It is a very short span of time during which the electron gets accelerated before again suffering collision with the vibrating ions and again having random motion. Right? So, average of all the relaxation time is known as average relaxation time. So, VD vector is equal to A vector tau. This is a very very important relationship between the drift velocity and the average relaxation time. Now, our main objective is to determine the relationship between drift velocity and the electric field. Just now we have discussed acceleration is given by minus e e vector divided by m. Therefore, substitute this value of a vector over here. So, drift velocity it will be equal to minus e e vector tau by m. This is tau, relaxation time. TAU, tau, that's the notation used for relaxation time. So, this is it. Students, this is the relationship between the drift velocity and the electric field. So, we have done this article. We are now in a position to define drift velocity. It is the average velocity acquired by the electrons inside a conductor under the influence of external electric field in addition to their random motion. And what is the relationship between drift velocity and electric field? This is the relationship which we are supposed to prove and which we have proved it. Right? This negative sign suggests that the electrons drift in a direction opposite to that of the electric field. Right? Electric field is from higher potential to lower potential while electrons it is drifting in a direction opposite that of the electric field that is from low potential to higher potential. So this is a very very important expression. Right? It can be written in terms of potential difference as well. So also E in magnitude is equal to V by L. This V is the potential difference. This V is the potential difference. Therefore, Vd in magnitude it will be equal to E V tau divided by nL. This is again a very very important expression. This is the relaxation time. There are many conceptual questions which are based on this particular expression. Like if the potential difference across the ends of the conductor remain constant, then what will be the effect in the drift velocity of electrons if the length of the conductor is doubled? So look, that can be answered using this particular expression. If V is constant, potential difference is constant, then Vd is inversely proportional to the length of the conductor. So if the length of the conductor is made twice, the drift velocity of the electrons will become half. So for constant potential difference, drift velocity of electrons is inversely proportional to the length of the conductor. It's a key point. This is very very important. I again repeat, for a constant potential difference, the drift velocity of electrons is inversely proportional to the length of the conductor. Right students? So this is important. Again, another question. If the physical conditions and dimensions of the conductor remain constant, then how drift velocity varies with the applied potential difference? In that case, Vd is proportional to V. Rest quantities remaining constant. If other quantities like relaxation time, length, they remain constant, then drift velocity would be directly proportional to the potential difference. Like if across the ends of the conductor the potential difference is made twice, the drift velocity of the electrons will also become two times. Right? And it also depends upon the relaxation time. Now students, in the subsequent lectures, we will discuss that with the increase in the temperature, the relaxation time decreases. Now look, with the increase in the temperature, 
the positive ion starts vibrating with greater amplitude and it vibrates more vigorously. So, the probability of a free electron colliding with the vibrating ion also increases. So, as a result, students, collision takes place more frequently or rather, relaxation time decreases. So, please remember, with the increase in the temperature, the relaxation time decreases. So, therefore, if relaxation time decreases, then drift velocity will also decrease. So, what is the conclusion? With the increase in the temperature, the drift velocity of the electrons decreases. Right? So, these are some very, very important points. So, just remember this expression and also the special cases. The manner in which the drift velocity of electrons depends on potential difference, depends on the dimension of the conductor, depends on the physical conditions like temperature. So, this is a very, very important article, right? So that's the relationship between potential difference and electric field and there's a relationship between potential uh, drift velocity and the potential difference. Now let's proceed with the third topic. We will discuss the relationship between the drift velocity and the electric current. Now electric current, we all are aware of it. Electric current is the rate of flow of charge. That is the charge flowing through any section of a conductor per unit time. That is current. Right? So let's take the reference of the same diagram. So now we are going to deal with this particular topic. So we need to find out the relation between current and drift velocity. Right? We need to find out the relationship between these two. So what to do is students, consider the same case, this is a conductor of length L and cross-sectional area A, it's of uniform cross-sectional area, right? Let N be the total number of electrons, with the total number of free electrons, which are the charge carriers inside the conductor. Then, number density of electrons. Number density means the electrons per unit volume. Electrons per unit volume of the conductor, which will be given by total number of electrons per unit volume. This wire is in the form of a cylinder, and the volume of a cylinder is cross section area multiplied by length. So it will be A into L. So total number of electrons inside the conductor can be written as N A L. Put this as equation number one. Right? N capital N, it's the total number of free electrons inside the conductor. Small n is the number density of electrons. Number density means total number of electrons present per unit volume. A is the cross section area, L is the length of the conductor. Right? Also, length of the conductor is L. And suppose the electron drifts from one end of the conductor to the other end with average velocity V. So, time taken by an electron to drift from one end of the conductor to the other end, to drift from one end of the conductor to the other end, covering a distance length would be given by time, its distance divided by velocity, which is the average velocity. It's clear? Vd is the average velocity with which the electron drifts from one end of the conductor to the other end. So if the length of the conductor is L, then the time taken by the electron to cover this distance L with velocity Vd would be given by T equals to L by Vd. Isn't it? This is the average velocity which we call it as drift velocity. Also, current is, students you are aware, it is the rate of flow of charge. It is the rate of flow of charge. And charge which each electron carries is 1.6 into 10 to minus 19 coulomb. It is represented by small letter E. So if the conductor contains n electrons, total n electrons, so Q would be given by n multiplied by E as per the quantization. And T can be written as L divided by V. Now let's substitute the value of capital N over here and we should get the result. 
so let's see so we get i is equal to in place of capital n from equation 1 we can write n a l e divided by l into v d so l will get cancelled so we are left with i is equal to n e a b d this is the relationship between the current and the drift velocity this is the relationship between the current and the drift velocity right so i is equal to n e a v d n students it is not the total number of electrons it is the number of electrons per unit volume it is known as the number density of electrons si unit would be per meter cube e is the electronic charge 1.6 into 10 to minus 19 a is the cross section area which is considered to be uniform l is the length of the conductor and vd is the drift velocity right so this is again a very very important relationship i equals to nea vd that's the relationship between current and drift velocity so students we have done this as well now the fourth one let's discuss about electron mobility a sort of uh, term representing the agility of the charge carriers that's electron mobility so it is actually electron mobility is actually the drift velocity acquired by the electrons per unit strength of the electric field right so electron mobility we will represent it by mu electron mu stands for mobility and this is for electron mobility right so mu e so what i have stated is it is defined as the drift velocity acquired by the electrons per unit strength of the electric field this is the statement v divided by e so electron mobility is a physical quantity which expresses the agility of the charge carrier and mathematically or quantitatively it is defined as the drift velocity acquired by the electrons per unit strength of the electric field over here e is the strength of the electric field so this is the mathematical representation what about its si unit velocity it is meter per second electric field its unit is newton per coulomb so it will be coulomb per newton so it can be expressed in this manner or meter per second divided by its si unit is volt per meter so it can be written as meter square per second per volt that's the si unit of mobility right so we can express it other ways as well we can express it in terms of current as well now vd is equal to i over nea isn't it from this equation vd may be written as i over nea vd may be written as i over nea therefore electron mobility may be written as i divided by nea e so this is electron mobility right so this is the si unit of mobility and as i have already stated it is defined as the drift velocity acquired by the electrons per unit strength of the electric field okay now in order to conclude this session let's deal with the last topic that is current density again density per unit area right so current density normally so students last topic left is current density right let's discuss this particular term current density is actually denoted by j vector it's a vector quantity and it is defined as the current flowing through any section of a conductor per unit area in a direction normal to the area that is suppose this is the cross section area this is the cross section area of the conductor and the current is flowing along this direction this is the direction of the current so in that case current density would be along this direction along the direction of flow of current so current density is defined as the current flowing through any section of a conductor per unit area suppose the area is a so it will be current flowing through any section of a conductor 
a unit area and in a direction along the direction of flow of conventional current. Clear students? So in case current flowing through the section of a conductor is uniform, then current is simply given by J vector dot A vector. This is actually this is actually the area vector. As you are aware, area vector is perpendicular to given surface. So the angle between area vector and current density is 0 degree. So cos 0 is 1. So current in this case may be simply written as J A. Right? Also, in case the current flowing through the cross section of the conductor is not uniform, is non-uniform, then the small current may be represented as J vector dot J vector dot DA vector. This is for small cross-sectional area. This is the dot product. So here I must state a very very important point. Students you are aware, although direction is associated with current, we are aware current flows in the direction from higher potential to lower potential, right? Still, current is treated as a scalar quantity. Why is it so? Because while adding currents, we make use of laws of algebraic addition and we don't make use of laws of vector addition and the second reason look here current is given by the dot product or the scalar product of two vector quantities this is the current density which is a vector quantity area vector it is also a vector quantity and we are already aware the dot product or scalar product of two vector quantities is always a scalar quantity so students always remember current is a scalar quantity. Also, we can express this current density in various forms. Right? We know that I is equal to MEA V. Therefore, current density in magnitude will be given by, let's substitute the value over here, NEA VD divided by A. So, A get cancelled. So, what is left is J is equal to MEVD. This is the relationship between current density and the drift velocity. Right? Also, this current density can be expressed in terms of electric field. How? I will explain. VD, we are aware in magnitude, is given by E, E top divided by M. Therefore, current density may also be written as NEVD. VD is E tau divided by m which implies that current density may also be written as n e square e tau is the average relaxation time divided by m this is the current density in terms of electric field right next one it can also be expressed in terms of the potential difference applied across the ends of the conductor as we are aware electric field is given by potential difference divided by length. Therefore, J current density it may also be written as N E square. In place of electric field, we can write V potential difference tau divided by ML. This is another expression for the current density in terms of potential difference. In terms of potential difference. So students, these all are the relationship between current density and other physical quantities. What about its SI unit? It is the current flowing per unit area in a direction normal to it. So current is ampere and area is meter square. So its SI unit is ampere per meter square. Do remember it. Right? So we have discussed all these topics. So before we finish this session, let us recapitulate all the important formulas or expressions which we have studied in this session, right? So let's recapitulate, let's summarize all those important expressions. First is drift velocity. It is student, the average velocity acquired by the electrons under the influence of electric field in addition to their random motion. 
And always remember, the magnitude of the drift velocity is far less as compared to the magnitude of thermal velocity. Thermal velocity of electrons is of the order of 10 raised to the power 5 meter per second, which is huge, right? So drift velocity, the various expressions, one of it is E, E, tau by M. Other one is E in place of electric field, you can write potential difference per unit length, right? This is another relationship. In magnitude, obviously in magnitude. Third, relationship in current and drift velocity is I equals to NEA VD. Right? Then fourth, acceleration which an electron experiences. It is in vector form given by minus E E vector divided by M. Fifth, regarding electron mobility, it is drift velocity acquired per unit strength of the electric field, right? Sixth, current density, it is the current flowing through any cross section of a conductor per unit area in a direction normal to the area. So, these all are the topics which we have covered during this session, right? So, students, if you like my video, then do subscribe my channel. And also urge your friends and colleagues to watch my video and subscribe it too, right? And please don't forget to hit the like button. I'll continue to uh, serve you with uh, my knowledge, with my lectures. And we'll continue in the next session with some new topic. We'll start with Ohm's law, right? Till then, goodbye and uh, do take very good care of yourself.